hello Philippe. Can you uh, introduce yourself, uh, say a little word about who you are? And mm -hmm. Okay, uh, my name is Philippe de Bouc. I'm a, an anthropologist, so I'm, I'm not an artist, but I'm a, an academic. And um, so I've always been interested in, in the possibilities that, that lay dormant in the in between or the dusklands between ethnographic research, uh, academic writing and artistic practice. I've always and throughout my career worked with photographers and with film and, uh, and so on. And in the case of Sami Baloji, the photographer and myself, I think we, we have that shared interest in both. Um, I, I think in the work of Sami, research has always been an important part, uh, archival research and so on. So he, he has that academic part uh, to, to his work. And I think that's what we share, the two of us. How can you constitute by combining these two ways of looking at things, uh, how can you constitute an archive of what urban life in the global south and uh, in particular in Central Africa in our case. Uh, in Congo we spent in all three or four months uh, together. That is really a collaborative effort that part of the text that I've written uh, uh, would never have been written without Sami. So I, we, we had lots of conversations about that and that shaped the text. Part of the photographs would never have been taken if I hadn't been there. So, uh, and, and these two work together. And by putting these two ways of, of uh, representing a reality together, you, you end up in, 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 with, a, with a kind of alternative narrative. Uh, for me as a writer, for example, to have these photographs there and to have generated the photographs together uh, allows, allows a different kind of narrative uh, uh, line. You can photographs, you can work with, with uh, sequences in a different way, uh, with temporality in a different way. You, you can break away from the linear narrative from when you write, you write from left to right and then it, uh, word after word after words is a linear construction. With photography it allows you to break it up and, and to, to work with juxtaposition, to work with paradox and so on. And in the same way I think Sammy's photographs uh, I mean, stand each photograph stands by itself, but at the same time he's very good in narrating between the spaces, between the photographs and sequencing them and in, in, in a specific way so that you also create a visual narrative. And so these two, so writing, you can, you can write with photo, photography, you can write with text and you can write with the two together in a way. So in that sense it, it's really, it was really a, a collaboration in the real sense of the word, I think. And the result of this collaboration was this exhibition, but also uh, a large publication, which is also presented here uh, at the power plant. And the book is structured around several chapters. Mm -hmm. Is the exhibition in a way structured the same way? How was the selection of images mm -hmm. uh, made? Not, it's not selected totally in the same way. I think the, the book is constructed, I, I think of it as a kind of horizontal uh, walk across the landscape of the city by what I call urban acupuncturists. You, you, uh, you stick your ethnographic or photographic needle in a specific spot. And, and we selected places that we think are important to understand how a city works. A specific building, a field, a cemetery. Uh, you, you document these places and so that you understand each of these places in a way a city within a city. And, and from there you can try to see how these places, how they bring people together and goods, commodities and so on, and how each place ramifies and, and extends itself to other places. And then when you connect the dots, when you connect the acupuncture points, you can kind of, uh, you, can, you can make a representation of, of, of an urban landscape in a way. You, you, can, you can write about horizontally about what connects the city in one, how, how it spreads out, uh, how it grows. And so that, that horizontal and vertical, that, that was really one of the, the points that we tried to combine in the text. Uh, and it's reflected in the exhibition as well. But the book was constructed around also topography. Mountains, skyscrapers, things that tend towards the vertical and the transcendental. And then post-colonial holes, potholes, graves, uh, uh, artisanal mines. Uh, and so between mountains and holes, uh, how do these 
things connect, how what, what people dream about the city, the, 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 the fantastic dreams about new urban futures they have, and the actual reality in which they live, uh, surrounded by garbage and, and holes everywhere. And uh, so how do these two, what, the, the gap in between, what is that gap, what is the hiatus there, and how can you start to understand that hiatus, that gap? And, uh, and so the gap and the hole was a very important thing in the book. It comes out less strongly in the exhibition, but there, there are other things that, that, that work there. The video installations that yeah, you don't have in the to, book. Uh, yeah, this is a question I wanted to, to ask you. In the show, there, is, uh, there are the photo series, there is the book, of course, mm -hmm. and also there are two uh, video works. Can, can you say a little word mm -hmm. about those two videos? One is a new production, one is a is an existing work uh, from, from Sami, but also recent? Uh, no, we actually the two are quite, uh, were made for this occasion. Uh, the, the one is about uh, um, uh, a specific land chief somewhere in Congo, outside of Kinshasa, the capital, uh, who is chased off his land by uh, a, mining, a mining corporation that intends to build also a new city on that place for the, the workers that will come, it's uh, the largest uh, copper mining deposit in the world and so it's a huge uh, huge mining place with lots of mountains it's a, it's a, a 200 mountains and they are erased they are disappearing and with the disappearance of these mountains also the history of these people that is very much linked to these mountains their identity where they come from and so on each mountain is also houses a certain spirit and so on all of that disappears so you see how they're how who they are is unraveling because of that new city that is moving in, that would probably never be constructed, but anyway, uh, so these people are chased off. And then the other video is about a specific building in uh, Kinshasa, a kind of self-made uh, skyscraper by a guy who calls himself uh, a doctor in spatial and aeronautic medicine, whatever that might mean in the Congolese context. So he built this vertical proposition, this skyscraper, without architects, without... Uh, plan basically and, uh, and so that building in itself is is a city and it's a programmatic statement about what the city should be like uh, it's a city within a city it's a kind of autarkic environment where everything that the city is is incorporated in that building where he and his wife live all by themselves 12 stories high no electricity no water so it's far from perfect it's unfinished but the dream is there of what a new city should be and so so for me, it, it really summarizes a lot of what the exhibition is about because it, it tells you about everything that doesn't work in an urban environment like that. At the same time, even though this person, the, the main actor, might be slightly deranged or, or uh, hallucinates, but he's also very lucid. He, he, he puts the point to what the city is and what the city could be and how we have to construct it together. And it's a, a kind of collaborative uh, a collective effort yeah, to make for the, the city community as well. for the community and, uh, and so there's something dreamlike and, 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 and also uh, something very beautiful about what he has to say in spite of the madness in a way and, uh, and so that's, that, that kind of contrast summarizes a lot of what uh, this that enormous cityscape of, of Kinshasa with its 12 million inhabitants uh, represents today it's, it's living in the middle of madness, but at the same time, the madness in itself generates other possibilities and, and always transcends the, the, the shortcomings of, of urban life in a way. And uh, so there's a lot of poetry in that as well. Indeed. Mm -hmm.